Charismatics Financial Institute. So traditional analysis is hypothesis based. So what that means is in order for us to analyze data, somebody needs to ask a question, right? This, this is the usual statistics. And the question has to be yes, no question, right? So for example, we can look, ask the data and, and say, hey data, do you think the price of the stock is going to go up tomorrow based on the data we have? So that's a yes, no question. And then after we form this yes, no question, and, and the question is definitely formed by a person, by, by a human researcher. So it's the question is biased. It's not, not naturally biased by the person's experience, uh, by this person's um, ability to ask questions, right? By this person's kind of universe, the ability to see outside of the box. Um, so it, it's only, this question is only going to be as good as the person who is asking the question. So, but let's say that we have a question and then we're going to take this question to the data and we're going to torture the data until we get the yes, no question, usually in the form that we like. So if we're, if we're convinced that there has to be some predictability, we can tweak the analysis in such a way that eventually it will say, okay, okay, there may be some predictability, okay, if there's no obvious predictability. So it's, it's basically traditional analysis, that's how traditional analysis works. Now, if we look to big data analysis on, on the right side of, of the page, we have three different types <coughs> of uh, groups of uh, big data analyses. So the first one is the supervised learning, which works in many, in many respects like the traditional analysis. Then we have semi-supervised learning, which is uh, also hypothesis driven, but uh, we have more prediction feedback. I won't have time to talk about this today, but I think it's a fascinating area. And it's really uh, the semi-supervised learning is something that allows you to copy the um, kind of wrap a system around a human uh, expert's head. OK, and, and if you if there is somebody who has like really superstar ability to uh, make predictions, you can observe this person's inputs and outputs and you can actually build a system that kind of makes uh, these kind of things. So an example um, uh, for this, maybe uh, tr the traditional way it was developed for it was developed uh, mostly at companies like Facebook and Google. And what it was used for is to classify images. So, for example, Facebook has a policy that no offensive images are allowed. So, but it was too cumbersome for a person to actually sit there and check every single image all the bloody time. So, what what uh, the um, uh, they they have come up with a system that looks at the few images that are classified by person, and then it expands this to all the other images. Okay, so this is semi-supervised learning. There's several techniques in, in that. It's not just one technique. Um, and um, but in finance, this this translates very well into let's say research. Okay, so you want to you have one superstar analyst, and let's say that's all you can afford. All right, and but you want to expand this person's brain in a sense to other domains. So kind of expand the productivity of this person to other to other entities. All right. So let's say this person is focused on, on specific stocks, but you want this person to 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 handle more breadth. So more breadth of data. So you, you can use this semi supervised learning to do so. All right. And for even better result, you would have semi supervised learning produce some results and then you would feed them basically give them back to to the person to review. And that way you increase the productivity even further because you're saving your star analyst time and really making sure that the star analyst is uh, kind of now supervising the systems instead of really doing the grunt work. So you're letting the semi-supervised learning do the grunt work uh, for you, for your organization. OK, and then we can we have unsupervised learning, which is amazing. It's 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 completely different from the traditional universe. And here we let the data speak for themselves. So um, we really are basically asking the data. We're giving the unsupervised learning models 
uh, the data and it's and I'll show you it should be dirty, completely unpolished data and we say, hey data, tell us what you think. OK, and the data tells you what you think. Now there's still a range. There's still need to interpret the findings. It's not exactly straightforward, so you still need a person to translate essentially <clears throat> what the data is saying into the human language. We have not yet evolved these systems to the point where we can actually translate automatically, because, but I'm sure it's coming. Uh, but at this point, you still need a researcher to really translate the findings in, into to to uh, explain it to people, but uh, it's 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 a different level because data itself is unconstrained. These unsupervised learning models they're unconstrained by any human biases or by any human opinions or beliefs or anything along those lines. It's really telling you what what the key drivers are in the population, uh, and and we'll talk a little bit about how how it does today. Okay. Prismatics Financial Institute.